Construction officials are planning to make the road less of a headache for drivers when it rains. Plans for a new affordable housing complex back on the table. Will it go through this time? Coming up. And how a new Florida law will impact people who need opioid medication regularly. Your Suncoast News starts now. You're watching ABC 7 News at 6. Hello and welcome. I'm Scott Dennis. And I'm Jacqueline Matter. Thanks for joining us. The amount of rain that we've seen in the past couple of days has caused flooding throughout Sarasota, especially last night near the construction site on US 41 and 10th Street. And while that flooding has since receded, it is not uncommon in Sarasota. FDOT says yesterday's problem is due to debris clogging the drainage system from not only the construction site, but also residents and businesses within the area. Sarasota County reminds people to keep their properties clean. Anything floatable or plastic or trash is just picked up instead of washed away with the rain. FDOT says that they are working on cleaning out the debris in the drainage system and checking the pumps to make sure nothing was damaged. They're also looking into creating a backup system just in case this happens again in the future. Yeah, pretty unusual for that to happen at that location. Mm -hmm. Let's get uh, a check on the storms that are out there right now with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Yeah, I was out there last night and saw that. Uh, typically, it floods in to the uh, south of that, in fact. There's a lot of flooding that goes on uh, just south of that location. Uh, but uh, right there, as a result of the construction and as we heard, the pumps uh, may be jammed up with a lot of debris causing that uh, extra issue. Uh, issue right now is in Palmetto, where heavy rain has been falling there for the past hour now. And I'm certain that there's some problems with flooding going on from Bradenton, but more so in Palmetto. Although this storm is weakening, uh, it's still some pretty heavy rainfall there. Rainfall rates at one point were up to uh, three, three and a half inches per hour, and it's drifting now to the north. It's trying to make a break to the west, but just can't because of that west coast sea breeze. The lightning is lessening. That's good news. I took the lightning out of there to get the rainfall query, and it's gone down to about eight tenths of an inch per hour, but still raining heavy there. Heavy rain now with a lot of lightning taking place near I-75 UTC Mall uh, near the Nathan Benderson Park into the meadows as well. Uh, all this associated with the sea breeze clash and that rainfall now stretching all the way down to Southgate, getting close to Siesta Key. And again, folks, uh, if you can hear the thunder, make sure you're indoors and away from that because sometimes these can release bolts out ahead of the rainfall. The rain is heavy now near North Cattleman Road, I-75 University, uh, stretching all the way over to uh, uh, university, in fact, uh, the uh, country club there. You can see the tops of these up to 35, 40,000 feet, not the 50,000 feet we saw on July 3rd, but still, uh, this is strong enough to produce uh, some small hail. We've had uh, some Doppler indicated hail reported near Palmetto just about a half hour ago. Other storms starting to break out, uh, not uh, right into Northport, but near there. This is going to be moving northward. This is the clash now that you're going to see just a tremendous amount of heavy rainfall right here. And we don't need the rain there because that feeds into the Horse Creek near Arcadia, which is now under a flood warning there. And also at the Manatee River at the Mayak Ahead, also flooding taking place there. And this is going to be a concern, I think, over the upcoming day is that flooding issue as a result of uh, more storms forecast for inland areas. Well, this is a very vigorous tropical storm. It's the second one of the season barrel, but it looks like it's going to have some hard time going through strong winds off the South American coast there, and it may actually weaken before it hits there. We'll have more on that coming up in a few minutes. Back to you. All right, Bob, thank you. Three buildings near Orlando will need to be rebuilt after yesterday's storms. A fire department in Tavares says a tornado touched down and took out a Winn-Dixie, a restaurant, and a warehouse. About 80 people were inside the restaurant at the time, but luckily nobody was injured. According to the Tavares Police Department's Twitter account, the tornado did not stop last night's 4th of July festivities. And a tornado touched down yesterday afternoon in Lake County. It started as a water spout over Lake Eustis before coming ashore and destroying a warehouse and then damaging a restaurant, too. While it did some damage, the National Weather Service reports it was a small twister. The estimate it was an EF zero, meaning it had winds from 65 to 85 miles an hour. Well, thanks to Hurricane Irma, all students in one Florida school system will be getting free breakfast and lunch until 2022. The Tampa Bay Times says that's because Hernando County was deemed a disaster after a disaster area after that storm. All 25 schools in the district will now be eligible for the Federal Community Eligibility Provision Program. That program offers meal assistance in low income areas. Before this year, only 17 schools in that area were eligible for the program. Now you can help ABC7 fight hunger here in our area. Find out how by logging on to mysuncoast.com slash hunger. 
Harvey Vengloff is known here in Sarasota for building affordable housing, and back in January, he called it quits on one of his most recent projects, saying the city made it unaffordable. Today, Van Groff is announcing with Sarasota City Commissioner Hagen Brody that he is back to reconsider. ABC 7's Taylor Torregano is live on the lot where that complex would be built right near Fruitville Road. Taylor? Good evening, Scott. Jacqueline, I'm standing on the eight acres of land that Harvey Van Groff already owns and hopes to develop. He says he started this whole effort to build this affordable housing complex here when he found out that his own employees couldn't afford to live nearby, even though they made over $50,000 a year. You haven't solved the problem. Well, what are you going to do to solve the problem? Harvey Vingroff has the solution, and it's worked all over the country. We're doing things in the state of Washington. We're doing things in Jacksonville. and We're doing things in, in Georgia. Why not here? He's been successful in bringing 1,800 apartments to the Sarasota and Bradenton area, too. But after years of planning to bring another complex to Fruitville Road in January, Harvey got frustrated with city staff. People in other cities have said, gee, you guys do affordable housing, that's great. Come on over here and, and we'll give you free land. We'll help you with any way we can. We'll ease all the restrictions and we'll, we'll make it happen. Not the case here, so Harvey quit until today. Today is a good day for affordable housing. Harvey Vengroff has agreed to come back to the table uh, with his affordable housing project in the city of Sarasota and um, we couldn't be more thrilled because this community desperately needs uh, more workforce and affordable housing. The original plan was for five six-story buildings, but they've scaled that down quite a bit. Ben Groff now plans to bring 150 two-bedroom apartments with an average rent of $700. But then we have to start looking at all the fees, and there are several million dollars worth of fees. That's where the city comes in. I don't think it's any secret that it is tough to get things done um, in the city of Sarasota, and we're trying to change that. Now, Van Groff says that this can only move forward if he and the city is able to work out some sort of agreement on those millions of dollars in building fees, adding that a luxury condo developer may be able to afford $38,000 to document the weeds, but he cannot. I'm reporting live just off of Fruitville Road. Taylor Torgano, ABC7, your Suncoast News. Taylor, thank you. New developments on a story we've been following all afternoon. A Bradenton man has been charged with vehicular homicide by the Florida Highway Patrol following a deadly crash in northwest Bradenton. This crash happening just before 11 o'clock this morning on 9th Avenue Northwest and 75th Street Northwest. Troopers say 30-year-old Brandon Williams was driving recklessly on 75th Street when he tried to pass another car, lost control, and hit another vehicle. A 43-year-old man was killed. Witnesses describe what happened. The reason why the cops got here so quick because that driver was on Manatee Avenue driving out of control, like, and people started calling. So by the time he got here, he clipped her and just made a, a continued domino effect. The victim's three-year-old daughter had to be airlifted to Bayfront Medical Center for treatment. Williams was taken to Blake Medical Center to be treated for just minor injuries. An internal investigation by the Florida Highway Patrol results in the suspension of one of its troopers. Joshua Flo was issued a 24-hour suspension after the agency determined that he did not follow proper investigative procedures during a hit-and-run traffic incident. The situation involved Sarasota County Assistant State Attorney Jesse Weissman. In 2016, Weissman had been out with friends and reportedly got into two traffic crashes while driving home. Trooper Flo arrived on scene and instead of taking pictures and investigating claims of DUI, he drove her home. A week later, Weissman was fired from her job. A new state law now in effect will make it more difficult for doctors to prescribe opioids for more than three days. Starting July 1st, doctors can now only prescribe Schedule II opioids like hydrocodone for three days at a time or seven days in special cases. Doctors will also have to check a state database of controlled substance history for each patient they prescribe. Now, this could mean more doctor's visits and higher health care costs initially for patients. At the beginning, there's no question there's going to be more work. But we have to do something anyway. You know, and we are all in the middle of this situation. And a little bit of work is going to be OK. These prescription limits are only for treating acute pain caused by trauma, surgery, or illness. Those with prescriptions for chronic pain will not be affected by the law. 
Still to come tonight in your Suncoast News, we'll take you to a polluted lake that neighbors say has been a problem for at least three years. Plus, the shocking number of marine animal deaths after recent holiday festivities. Picking out a new ceiling fan? That's a do-it-yourself. Installing your new ceiling fan? No. That's a don't do-it-yourself. For ceiling fans, rewires, or anything electrical, play it safe. And call on the trained electricians from your locally owned Mr. Sparky. It's no accident that so many of our customers are repeat customers. Thank you. You Trust Mr. Sparky for all your electrical repairs. Sparky. I heard about the Detoli Cancer Center through friends of mine who had been treated here and were very pleased with the treatment. If there is prostate cancer, we at the Detoli Cancer Center will find it using 3D color flow Doppler ultrasound. And that helped precisely identify where my cancer was and some additional cancers that were not found during the biopsy. I would recommend the Detoli Cancer Center. As a group of human beings, they are unbelievably great. Need more space in your place? The More Space Place can help. With Murphy beds that disappear to reveal a home office, living room, or den. Custom closets with designated areas for your shoes, bags, wardrobe, and accessories. Custom built entertainment centers, garage storage systems, and more. The More Space Place has three showrooms next to Sunny's on US 41 South in Sarasota, on Lakewood Ranch Boulevard just south of State Route 64 in Bradenton, and on Tamiami Trail next to Panera Bread in Port Charlotte. Put more space in your place at the More Space Place. Did you know that a dirty CPAP system can make you sick? If you knew what could be growing in your mask and hose, it would keep you up at night. <gasps> now SoClean.com has released the world's first and only automated hands-free CPAP cleaner and sanitizer. With its patented design, SoClean is fast, effective, and hands-free, killing 99.9% .9 of all CPAP germs. Try SoClean now through this special TV offer free for 30 days. Just call 800-604-0398. My health has improved. It's simple to use and I'm not worried about infections. SoClean works on all CPAP machines and popular masks, destroying CPAP bacteria, viruses, and germs without the daily hassle of washing your system by hand. Just place your mask in, close the lid, and in just minutes, voila, sanitized and ready to use. Try SoClean risk-free for 30 days. This is a limited time offer. Call now, 800-604-0398, or visit SoClean.com today. A lake in Holmes Beach has many residents concerned. They say Spring Lake is looking bad and they blame it all on pollution. It's a lake that is now filled with mud and residents say it's harming marine life. Back in 2015, 22,000 gallons of sewage flowed into the lake, killing hundreds of fish. It has been a disaster. It's so contaminated, you can't see the bottom anymore. Uh, there, there's been all kinds of uh, feces and everything floating all over the the lake. People there are hoping to have that mess cleaned up sometime soon. Officials from Manatee County could not be reached for a comment. Just days after a violent home invasion on Holmes Beach, police are starting a new voluntary home security program there. Police asking homeowners who have surveillance cameras to join a database and then help fight crime in the city. Police say officers will not be able to access the video unless you give them permission to do so. If you want to sign up, contact Home Beach Police Department. Beaches in Sarasota County are a lot cleaner today thanks to the hard work of dozens of volunteers. More than 200 people woke up extra early this morning for the 5th annual Liberty Litter Cleanup. The volunteers picked up more than 122 pounds of trash and recyclables from nine different area beaches. Northport Police reminding people that garbage cans are not la launching pads for fireworks. Police tweeting out this photo today of somebody's unfortunate encounter with the explosives last night. They say this happens every year. 
But be warned, it is a $100 fine if you are caught. A Florida man is recovering from a severe 4th of July accident. The Lauder Hill man lost part of his hand because of fireworks last night. Lauder Hill Fire Rescue posted on Twitter that the injury resulted in a, quote, partial amputation of the man's hand. His name or condition has not been released. A family visiting Florida is counting their blessings today after their daughter nearly drowned in a pool. Daytona Beach police say two first responders vacationing from New York saved the little girl from the deep end of a hotel swimming pool. A New York State trooper and firefighter were staying at the hotel and were able to save the girl before paramedics arrived. Got her out, was able to get some water and fluids out of her um, to get her to start breathing. The little girl is uh, with her family, told police she doesn't remember how or why she ended up in the pool because she's afraid of the water. A sad discovery on one Sun Coast beach now has Florida Fish and Wildlife investigating. Moat Marine Lab has a 24-hour response program for stranded sea turtles, dolphins, and whales. But yesterday, the team received a report of a dead manatee in Sarasota County, and the FWC is now involved. Moat Marine also retrieved two dead loggerhead sea turtles that have been struck by boats in the last few days. A reminder of just how important it is to watch out for marine life. All right, let's turn to our weather now. We've got uh, some storms again around and pretty yeah, persistent today. Pretty persistent, big heavy storms over Palmetto. By the way, the turtles, uh, I talked to a resident on Holmes Beach and they said they woke up this morning, two new nests. So even That's overnight great. during the fireworks, they had two new nests oh, wow. uh, developing there. Yeah, so lots going on as that, as that goes. Lots going on in the weather too. I want to show you this photo that was sent in by Joe Barbetta. Uh, near the Westin. This was, uh, again, this is the area that typically floods when we get just a couple of inches of rainfall there. Uh, this is not where it was at 10th Street and 41. This is down the road a little bit further south, and you can see the cars uh, stalled out in some cases. I saw a few cars towed yesterday as well as a result of the, them driving into the uh, flooding conditions there. The roads had to be uh, shut down for a while, and now we're getting some flooding in Palmetto, although it's starting to lessen there. Lakewood Ranch also getting a, a double shot of rain today. There's the first batch of rain around 430, and then another one now moving in. A heavy shower is moving through the Lakewood Ranch area, so uh, most of it east of I-75. You can see those uh, intense storms now as that west coast breeze has made it far inland, and the east coast breeze is here, but the storms are moving basically to the north. They're really starting to fire up as expected as those two breezes met right there. Uh, but the showers over Palmetto starting to wind down. We're starting to get rainfall approach the coast, uh, but it's had a hard go of it getting all the way out there. Uh, you can see uh, near Sarasota also stretching up to I-75 near the UTC Mall. The rain is lessening there, not as intense as it once was. Some lightning occurring along I-75, some tough driving right there. Uh, as you move through Venice all the way down to Northport and Port Charlotte and the Punta Gorda really getting the heavy rain. Uh, rainfall rates up to two inches an hour there. And it's all associated with a little trough of low pressure left behind from that low pressure that was spinning around here over the past couple of days. I mentioned the rain starting to come to an end in Palmetto. It is Braden and also a couple of lightning strikes still occurring there though. Uh, as far as the meadows go, you've been getting some heavy rainfall. North Sarasota now are getting close to the airport all the way down to near downtown Sarasota. Some moderate to heavy rainfall at times. You'll notice they were a little bit more intense just about a half hour ago or so, so that's a good sign. Uh, but the outflow boundaries from these could generate some other storms here right along the coast or even out in the Gulf of Mexico later on tonight. And you'll see these are moving basically to the north. The National Weather Service now has lifted the flood warning for the Manatee River at the Mayaka Head just the, within the last 10 minutes or so. It's still going on, though, for the Horse Creek near Arcadia. These will go on again and off again, depending upon uh, when the storms fire up. And if they fire up inland, I think it'll be back and not too uh, long from now because most of the storms over the next couple of days will be inland away from the coast. We will see a few along the coast as well. Don't get me wrong, but not the widespread rainfall. Uh, that we'll see with the uh, inland storms as a result of a little bit more of a westerly component to our wind flow over the upcoming days. Well, here's the forecast tonight. A few showers will eventually break the uh, west coast breeze down and head off into the Gulf of Mexico. So coastal residents will be advised of that up to 9, 10 o'clock. I think most of the action will be over. And then we could see some showers and storms again firing up in the interior portions of our viewing area and heading off basically to the east, but as I said, I think a rogue shower or two that will make a break toward the west coast as it breaks that sea breeze down. Saturday, maybe a few showers in the morning as the sea breeze gets going, and then the focus shifting off to the east coast late in the afternoon. Well, our focus is on the tropics now. We're getting closer to the deeper part of the season. Not quite there yet, but this is a, a very small tropical storm barrel, and it really 
uh, it was a surprise. It really uh, picked up really quickly. Top winds could get up to near hurricane force strength on Saturday, and then it's expected to get ripped apart by strong winds in the mid levels and upper levels of the atmosphere right there by the islands. We'll wait and see how that plays out. The hurricane center is still a little uncertain on that forecast. They don't give it much confidence at this point. Current conditions, we have some clouds and showers near the airport. It's 81 degrees there. Today's high was 89. The low was 70. A nice cool start to the morning for boaters tomorrow. Hardly any wind out there at all. Uh, smooth conditions on the bays and inland waters and a few morning showers are possible near the coast. Uh, the forecast uh, timing of the storms will sh change a little bit. Morning showers near the coast. Main focus inland storms as we push through the weekend and then a 40% chance for scattered storms. Fairly typical for this time of year. Back to you. All right, Bob, thank you. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, we'll show you what to do with any stray animals that you may see on the streets today. Almost every home here has sustained damage. We're glad you're okay. Oh, thank you. You could hear the gunfire. Around the corner here are the children back on the job. Back in the job. How are you? NBC's How you World News Tonight with David Muir is America's most watched newscast. Outdoor living is one of the greatest perks about living in Florida. So whether this is your style, or this, or maybe this, contact Superior Pools. They've been building pools from Sarasota to Naples since 2001, and they would love to build yours. I was always worried and scared. Mom was in pain. She wasn't going to get any better, and all the trips to the ER were painful for all of us. Then we called Tidewell Hospice, and everything changed. Now she has care in our home when she needs it, surrounded by family. We know we don't have much time left with mom, but we decided to make the best out of that time. Tidewell Hospice, it's more than you think. Today, everyone is looking for more fashionable choices in flooring than ever before. And G. Freed has responded with a huge selection of carpets, tile, wood, laminate, and vinyl. Installed by a highly skilled team, G. Freed has got everything you're looking for and more. The next time you think about quality flooring, think G. Freed Flooring America. G. Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. If you've been injured in an accident that wasn't your fault, and you're struggling to pay your bills while your case is dragging on, that's where Oasis Financial comes in. Only Oasis has Oasis Express Cash. That can get you from $500 to $25,000 in as little as 24 hours, faster than anyone else. There's no risk and no out-of-pocket cost. It was so simple. I made one phone call. Oasis was able to give me the money within 24 hours. To pay for my electric bill, my rent, and my groceries for my children. And even if you end up losing your case, Oasis lets you keep the money. So there's absolutely no risk to you. You don't have to worry about repaying Oasis. If I had lost my case, then I wouldn't be responsible for paying the money back. And that was a blessing. Oasis, they killed him, man. They helped me out. They, they gave me my life back. See how much money you can get before your case settles. Call Oasis Financial because life moves faster than your case. 1-800-874-8185. 1-800-874-8185. This is an important message for anyone with Medicare. You may be eligible for an all-in-one Medicare plan that combines hospital, medical, and prescription drug coverage together with extra benefits that may include dental, vision, hearing aids, and much more. Some of these plans have a $0 monthly premium regardless of your income. That's right. For one low plan premium, or in some cases a $0 premium, you may be able to get coverage for your hospital visits, doctor appointments, prescription drugs, routine dental care, eyeglasses and contact lenses, hearing aids, and possibly more. Today may be the first time you've heard about this type of Medicare plan. The advisors at the Medicare.com helpline are licensed insurance agents who will explain more when you call. Call now to see if you qualify. Call the number on your screen now. Call now to see if you qualify for these benefits. You worked hard for your Medicare. Now is the time for your Medicare to work hard for you. Not affiliated with or acting on behalf of any government agency or program. Watch Good Morning Suncoast. 301 and 41 both are showing a lot of slowdowns as well as the bridges that are coming into Brainton. Chance of showers during the morning hours thanks to a west wind. Tomorrow I think our rainfall chance will be enhanced. Weekdays starting at 5 a.m. Outdoor living is one of the greatest perks about living in Florida. So whether this is your style, or this, or maybe this, contact Superior Pools. They've been building pools from Sarasota to Naples since 2001, and they would love to build yours. 
Today is one of the busiest days of the year for animal service departments. Often pets run off on 4th of July because they're scared of the fireworks. Last night, four animals were found roaming the streets. We're hoping to reunite them with their owners. Um, when a pet comes into our facility, we take a picture of them, mm -hmm. put them on our website, and we anticipate to see more come in throughout the day. If you see a lost pet, you can call Animal Services to report it for them to pick it up. And if you lost your pet last night, you can go to their website at mymanatee.org to check if it's there. Yeah, one of my dogs does not do well with either lightning, uh, yeah. you know, thunder, right. and then um, fireworks. I know, my yeah, poor little dog was uh, shaking over there so, in the corner. So they hard, so too, that we're watching, actually. And, uh, you know, the, the dogs, obviously, you know, you have to keep them kind of indoors, obviously, yeah. during the situation, because they'll run and scatter when that happens. Yeah. So we saw that, but that was... Well, News Tonight with David, yours next. We'll see you again at 11. Have a good night.